to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, on our way to see Miss Nancy. Here we go. Attention, salute, flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen and coming again with life everlasting for all who believe. All right, and now Miss Angelica. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. All right, very good. Why don't y'all put my flags over there by the microphones today? Oh, well, I just got stabbed by the Christian flag. All right. Well, got a couple of things coming up in the next few days. Does everybody realize it's almost the end of the month? It's almost November. Isn't that amazing? Do y'all know what's happening next month? Next week even? Mr. Our, our resident FCS historian, Robert, has reminded us that it's election day next Tuesday. Has anybody gone with their parent to uh, vote? You've been to the vote poll? I'm thinking of going today, this afternoon. I want to go today, make sure that I get my vote cast. I don't want to stand in a long line on Tuesday. Would y'all like to know who I'm voting for? This year, all right, listen, this is breaking news. I'm going to give you my endorsement. That means I'm going to tell you who I plan on voting for. You ready? This year, 2020, I plan on voting for second grade. Have you seen their posters? They have some awesome posters. If I had to vote, if I had to make a choice, I would say, what, what was Sky? What, it, what, was your endor what was your special line on yours? Fly high with sky or something like that? Would you? Vote for sky and your, your blessings will fly. I like that. And you know what my favorite campaign stance is? Where's Naomi? Naomi, free ice cream. If you vote for Naomi, you get free ice cream. Amen? Sounds good. I saw all y'all, y'all are all incredible. Now, that's Tuesday. On Wednesday of next week, do y'all know what's happening in chapel? What's happening? No, not election day. We're having, we're having awards chapel next week. Awards. Does everybody know what, if you're on A, B, honor roll or straight A's principles list? Well, next week, everybody's going to find out because we are going to honor our very smart students next week. That's next week's chapel. And then the week after that, we have a very special chapel for Veterans Day. Do you all know what a veteran is? What's a veteran? Anybody, yes, anybody that has been in the armed forces, that is the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. So we're going to represent them on November 11th, and we're excited about the next couple of chapels. And also, I have a very important message or a little announcement about today's chapel. Do you know who's talking today at chapel? Today for chapel, Ken is going to give us our message. Everybody point to Ken. Oh, 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 yes. All right, well, crazy day. We have two Kens in the building today. Here's Ken number one. Y'all point to Ken number one. Y'all did find him. All right, and now, because it's rude to point at people, he doesn't care. He's inanimate. But would you please wave to Mr. Ken over there on the other side? Hey, Mr. Ken. He's a good friend of Mr. Farley's. He's going to do our chapel today. But before we do that, let's welcome our elementary praise team. Let's all stand up. Get ready to worship.
aquí.
you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken and great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour Good job, guys. All right, I need a friend to pray for us this morning. You want to pray, Mirabella? Come on up, Mirabella. I need to drop somebody off. I got somebody that needs to keep an eye on somebody here. Inside joke. All right, Mirabella, you ready? All right, let's all sit real still. Let's all pray. 
God, thank you for this beautiful day, and thank you for letting us not be in the darkness, and thank you for letting us get out of the light, and thank you for making the whole word, world and the great yard and everything you've done, even the homes and even the chairs. Thank you for everything you've done. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. That was awesome, Mirabella. Good job. Give it up for Mirabella. Give it up for the Lord. Amen. It might be raining outside, but she's right. It is a beautiful day because it's the day that the Lord has made, right? All right. Well, as promised, we're going to welcome our very special speaker, Mr. Ken. Give it up for Mr. Ken. I should have told Marabella we need prayer because I'm not sure this is going to work. Let's hope it does. And it didn't. We're in trouble. Well, guys, you guys up there are going to have to handle it. Um, I brought a PowerPoint presentation because I want to talk with you guys today. And I have a lot of cool stuff on there. But if I can't click to it, we're in trouble. So how are we going to work this? Well, there goes one of them. There you go. So... Did it just do that five times? Are you guys playing with me up there? Hold on. Hold on. It might work. Let me see. I don't think this is working. Anyway, I got you. I got you. What? Yeah, what? Anyway, yes. Wonderful. Hey, where's my, uh, where's the kindergarten class? I know they're somewhere. Kindergarten class. Where's the kindergarten class? Oh, there you guys are. Hi there. First grade. First grade? First grade. Second grade. Okay. Third grade. For, fourth grade. Oh, you guys too, huh? Fourth grade? Thank you, teacher. Me and so excited. Fifth grade? Is that everybody? Did I miss anybody? K4. I'm sorry. K4. Oh, I don't miss you guys. You guys are the most exciting guys of all. Hey, listen, I'm going to need your help as I teach today. Um, there's going to be words that are going to pop up on the screen that are yellow. And if you actually see one of these words, I need you to, to read it out loud. Hello, I appreciate that. But what I need you to do, what I need you to do is if you see a yellow word on the screen, I need you to say it real loud, okay? So you actually see it. I already said hello. We don't have to keep going back and forth, okay? So um, I want to say, what's that? Oh, hello, hello. Okay, hey, we are talking. You guys have been talking apparently from what I understand about um, things you're afraid of, right? And so I've got some, I got some pictures up here I want you guys to see. But you're going to have to tell me what you see, okay? So see if you can tell me what these are. Ready? What is this? What would you say? How did you get that? That's impressive. It's lightning. Are you, some of you guys scared of lightning? Yeah. How about this one? I got a bunch. You guys got to stick with me. What's this? A spider. You guys are impressive. Usually it takes a little longer. What about this one? You guys got this one yet? A dinosaur. Yeah, a dinosaur. They're scary, aren't they? I haven't seen one recently, but they're scary. What about this one? Anybody see this? Tornadoes. Yeah, we just had some come through Chattanooga not too long ago. Right? Tornadoes. What about this one? You don't know yet? How? Someone said it. I can't believe That's impossible. You can't tell me you saw a snake already. Right? Snakes. What about this one? This is, this is a real tricky one. This is a real tricky one. Monsters? What? You're right. They're monsters. What about this one? All kinds of bugs. Nasty bugs. Some of you guys are scared of bugs. My grandsons are terrified of fire ants. They're not fun. What about this one? What? You guys aren't afraid of a puppy, are you? What about this guy? Ah, that's a little more scary, right? Okay, what about this? Here we go. Hey, I was told by somebody that you guys aren't even going to know what this is. So I'm, gonna, I'm hoping someone knows what this is. Does anybody know what this is? What is it? It's a paddle. You guys don't even know what that is. I had to put that on there because I, I was scared of those when I was your age. When I was your age, I had to be careful of that. 
How about this one? Well, this, this is a tough one. What? How are you guys so smart? You guys are the smartest kids I ever dealt with. Dark. Some of you guys are afraid of the dark. What about this? Yeah. Is anybody afraid of swimming or afraid of pools? Yeah, some people are like that. I got another one. How about this? What? Who's afraid of clowns? That's, that's not. Okay, what about this? What about this? How in the world did you guys get this? Sharks. Terrified of sharks. Okay, here's another one. This one's going to be a tough one. This is a tough one. Nope. Snowflakes? No, it's not a snowflake. What about this? Here you go. Here it comes. Here it comes. Is anybody afraid of falling? Afraid of heights? I stand too close to this thing, I'm afraid I might fall off. Right? Okay, now let me tell you something. This is the most terrifying of all. You gotta watch out for this one. This is very scary. Some of you guys are very, very scared of this one. This is terrifying. Anybody ever seen one of these before? This is just, I'm just telling you, if you haven't seen this, it's scary. Get ready. Ah! What? Mr. Shaw. That, wow. Here's a question for you guys. Here's a question for you guys. Is it normal to be afraid? Is it normal to be afraid? Yes, it is. What? Oh, there it is. It's in yellow, so it must be true. Yes. I need you to know, it's important for us to know, that fear is very normal. Even your teachers, your parents, people you think aren't afraid of stuff, have things that they're afraid of. But let me tell you something real quick. Why do we become afraid? I want to tell you why we get scared. Why is it we get scared? We get scared because we're unaware. We're unaware. There's some things that we can't, there's some things that we can't see. Sometimes we're looking and we don't know, we can't see what's going on, so we get scared. I'm not sure. I'm looking in somewhere, I'm going someplace, like I'm in the dark, I'm in my room. I might get a little bit scared because I can't see something. Maybe it's because I'm unsure. There's something we don't trust. Don't trust. I might be a little scared of sitting on something that might make me fall. I might be scared of doing something because I don't trust it. I'm not sure of it. Kind of like this today when I got here, I wasn't really sure that the projector was going to work like it was supposed to. I was a little scared about that. A little kind of different kind of fear. What about this? Uneducated. There's something that we don't know. There may be sometimes there's things that we don't know that causes fear. Let me show you examples. Let me walk through, down through those things. When we're looking at when we're looking at these items that we were talked about being afraid of, when we're unsure about the weather, we can ask ourselves some questions. Like, here's a great question: Who controls the weather? God. God controls the weather, right? The weather's not just random. It doesn't just happen. God actually controls the weather. What about these things? Right? Are there questions I can ask myself to help myself know something, see something, or be able to trust it? With these, yeah. Think about this. Is there things we can learn about animals? Do you know, do you know I, I was, my, my guy I work with in my office loves snakes. He's very weird, but he loves snakes. And we went paddle boarding. Shh. We went paddle boarding, and while we were out there, we saw a snake going across the water. And my wife was with me. I used to have a ball python. I used to have one too. But the, he was going across the water, and my wife got real scared. And my grandsons were like, oh, no. But this guy I was with, he was with me. He looked and he said, oh, that's just, and he told me what kind of spider, the snake it was. Not a big deal. And he went over and picked it up, right? I wouldn't pick it up because I don't know. I don't know what kind of snake it is, so I don't want to do that. Hey, let me tell you a little quick story about these guys right here. See this little spider right here? When I was in Haiti once, Right? Spiders are scary. I had a big, scary spider that I found that I thought was the coolest thing. And so I put it in a little jar, and I took the jar out to the children because I was going to have some fun. I wanted to play with them a little bit and see how they would respond. And so I showed the spider to some of the kids, and I expected them to, much like what you would do and what, some, some, what I might even do, go, ah, what is that? And the first kid I showed it to picked it up by the leg and threw it at his friend. And his friend picked it up and threw it at his other friend. And they had a game of pass the spider throwing it at each other. Have you ever played that game? No, me either. Because I don't like playing with spiders, right? Because spiders are a little bit scary. 
But they knew it wasn't a dangerous spider, so they had fun with it, right? So we can ask ourselves questions. Sometimes when we're scared, we can ask ourselves some questions. What about these pictures? Sometimes with these things, the question that we have for this one is, are they even real? Are monsters real? Are dinosaurs walking? Have you ever seen a dinosaur walking down the street? You did? Get out of here. You're kidding, you're kidding me. Right? You don't see dinosaurs. How about this? And here's a fun one. Watch this. See the guy in the bottom? Right? What, what's the deal with that guy? All he did was take his makeup and put makeup on. Is a clown something to be scared of? No, it's a guy with makeup and funny clothes. But sometimes we get scared. Right? We have to ask ourselves the question, is it real? How about this one? These things right here. Sometimes we're afraid of the dark. Sometimes we're afraid of swimming. Sometimes we're afraid of falling. And sometimes when we're bad, maybe at school or home, we might be afraid of getting in trouble. Maybe a spanking. Back in the day, they used the paddles, right? Back in the day. Right? But I can ask myself some questions. Are these avoidable? Can I do something to, can I learn how to swim? If I learn how to swim, I don't have to be afraid of drowning. If I am careful when I'm climbing a ladder or doing things that are high, I don't have to worry about falling if I'm careful. In the dark, one of the smart things to do is have a flashlight, right? Great, great way to avoid that. What about this guy? I'm sorry to say, there's nothing to do. There's nothing I can do about that fear. If you're afraid of Mr. Shaw, you're afraid of Mr. Shaw. No, I'm just kidding. So let me run, run through. There's another question I like to ask. Is there a way to not be afraid? Is there a way to not be afraid? And let me tell you what the answer to this question is, because the answer to this question is another question, and here's where I'm going to need your help, because we're going to walk through five things very quickly. And I wish I had a clock, because I don't know where I'm at. There you go. I'm moving faster than I thought. The question that I like to ask on anything in life, and guys, I will tell you something. I know you're learning it in this school. I know your teachers are teaching this. I know you're hearing it in chapel. But there's nothing, no better question to ask when you run into situations in life than what does God say? If you're afraid, my question is, what does God say about this? Now, how do I find out what God says? I read the Bible, right? I read the Bible. I talk to other people who know how to read the Bible, right? I read the Bible and see what God says. Do you believe this? The Bible says over 100 times, and it's actually debated as to how many times, but over 100 times at least, the Bible tells us not to fear. The Bible tells us not to fear. Now, let me, let me help you understand this. It's okay to be scared, but there's a difference between, between being scared and being controlled by fear. Being able, not able to move. I can't do anything. Why? Because I'm terrified. That's when I start saying, hey, I need to go back to God and see what God says. God says, don't, don't be afraid like that. Don't be afraid like that. There's no reason to fear. And then he gives us his, our reasons. Here they are. Why shouldn't you be afraid? Here's the first one. I'm going to give you five quick points that I want you guys to remember, and I think you'll remember them. Here we go. God works all things for the good of his children. God works all things for the good of his children. Love that. Who was that? You rock. What's it say? Romans 8.28 says this, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This verse tells me that God does all things. And we're talking about storms and, and even COVID and all these things. And we look at them and we go, oh, my gosh, these are terrible things. God does these things, and God brings these things in our life because he does all things for good. He makes good out of them. We don't understand it sometimes. But God does all things. He does, makes good out of all things for those who love him, for those who are being called according to his purpose. So God works all things, the good and the bad, the things that are scary and, and we're not sure of. He works all things for the good of his children. God is with his children, and he'll never leave them. Jeremiah 1.8. Jeremiah 1.8 says this. Do not be afraid of them, for and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Do you hear what this says? Do you know who God is? Yeah. God is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the one who has always been and always will be. And you know what he just said to you? In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8, he said, I am with you. And, if, and let me tell you something, guys. I'm showing you a couple of verses. This is all over the Bible. So this is, this is a, something that God is actually telling his people, but he tells us too. I am with you, and I will never leave you. So God does 
all things, God works all things for the good of his children. And God is with you when you're scared. God is with you. Wouldn't that be a great thing to remind ourselves? I'm scared. Ah, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, wait a second. I'm not alone. God is with me. God is with me. It's one of the things that when you study the Bible, there's a story of David. Anybody know the story of David? David faced a giant, Goliath. Did David face Goliath alone? No. You know why? Because God was with him. God was with him. And so because God was with David, he allowed him and enabled him to, to, to kill the giant. God will fight for his children. Listen to this. What does, Deut- what does it say? Deuteronomy 3.22. What does it say? It says, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God himself will fight for you. Wow. What a cool verse. You know what's happened sometimes? And I will tell you this. One of the things that happens in school sometimes is, and you're going to find this as you get a little bit older even more so, that sometimes people pick on each other. That can be scary. That can be not good. You can, you can get really bothered by that, right? Or you can realize, you know something, I don't have to fight. I don't have to, I don't have to make, make my way. I let God do that. God says, don't be scared. Don't be scared of other people. Don't be scared of other things because I will be with you. I will make all things work out good for you. And I will fight for you. It's a great promise that God gives us. We've got two more. God has promised to save his children. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say John 3, 17? We all know John 3, 16, right? What does John 3, 16 say? That's fantastic. Very good. We all know John 3.16, right? But John 3.17 says this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, which is a scary thing. God didn't send Jesus to make and tell us how bad we are and how awful we are and how we're in big trouble. What God sent Jesus in was to communicate to us that we needed a savior, but to do what? What's it say? If it works. God sent Jesus not to condemn us, but to save us. What a great thing. So when it comes to being scared of anything, what is it God's going to withhold? What is God not going to do that's going to keep me from being saved? He loves me enough. He's doing good things for me. He's with me. He's going to fight for me, and he's here to save me. Right? What's the last thing? There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Isaiah 45, verse 22 says this. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for... I love this class over here. Wow, is that your... That's your Bible verse a few weeks ago, and you still remember it. That's fantastic. I didn't even have the yellow stuff up there, and she quoted the whole thing, that whole group. Of, Good job, guys. That's great. Hey, let me tell you something. That's why your teachers teach you these verses. That's why I'm telling you these verses. Because when you're going through life and th- someone says to you, there's another God out there, your God's not that big of a deal, where there's a bunch of other gods out there, I want you to understand this, Bible, this Bible verse that you just learned, that you just quoted, is an amazing verse. Because this Bible says to me, turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, everyone. Not just people in the U.S., not just people on our side of the globe, But everyone in the world, turn to me because I am God and there is no other. Folks, these are very important things when it comes to fear. When you're coming to being being afraid of things in life, we can get caught up and busy with all kinds of stuff. Get worried about all kinds of stuff. and And like I said earlier, we can learn stuff. We can learn to see things differently. We can learn to trust things differently. We can under, and, and believe things, recognize things differently, right? We can go back and do all our research and study. But what we need to know most of all is who God is and what, we, what he can do for us and what he's promised to do for us. And so let me ask you this. How should we handle our fear? How should we handle when these things come around? You guys, are, if, you were, if I were to give you time to, to talk, I, I should have asked a little bit more, but I thought I was rushed for time. Um, as you guys think about these things, you're scared of some of these things. I, I, I can understand that because so am I. 
right? I'm, I get bothered. But how do we handle it? How do we handle these things? We trust in God. Why do we trust in God? Because he's the Lord? Because he's our Savior? He said he would save us? I'm sorry. Oh, okay, that's cool. Okay, because we have faith. Go ahead. He's bigger than any of our fears, right? Because he is God and there is no other. That's great. Yes. He helps us. He does, right? He lo God loves you? Are you sure? How, how do you know that? How do you know that? Great. Best place to go back to. Guys, let me just tell you, that's exactly what I want to encourage you as it relates to your fears. As you're walking through life, we can trust God to do what he said he's going to do. God said, God said, and I just said this a little bit ago, God said that I will do all good things for the people who love me. I will make all things good for those who love me. You can trust me because I am with you. You're not alone. You are never alone. I will fight for you. I will save you. And there's no one like me. Here's a verse I want you guys to remember. I don't know. If, is this someone's Bible verse? Is this someone else's Bible verse? Okay, let's read it together. Ready? Psalm 56.3. Very good. Let's try one more time. Psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Hey, guys, can I encourage you with that today? Can I encourage you with that today? When you guys are experiencing fear in the world, and guys, there's a lot of things out there that are scary. Sometimes it's bugs and animals and people and things, and sometimes it's things we don't even know. Even as, even as I said to you before, I would recommend, I'd encourage you guys, ask your teachers to find out what they're afraid of and how they handle it. Because your teachers are afraid of things too. But the answer to all of our, our questions, the answer to all of our fears is always, what does God say and can I trust him? And I want you to know that the Bible tells us over and over and over again, the stories in the Bible are there for one reason, to help us to know who God is and know that he is faithful and trustworthy and we can put our trust in him. I hope you've done that today. Folks, one of the things I really want to talk about, I, I always want to put as part of my um, challenge to you guys, is I know that they share the gospel with you guys. I know they share truth with you guys each and every day. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to encourage you to talk with your teacher about that today. If you don't know what that means, if you don't know what it means to actually have a relationship with God where you can trust him, you can talk with him each and every day, where his Bible, whether his word is important to you, I want to encourage you to talk with your teachers. Because there's nothing more important than knowing that uh, God is your father and that he will take care of you because you are his children. Can I pray with you? Can I do that? Yeah. Let's pray. Our Father God, I just thank you so much for this school. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing here at Friendship Christian. I thank you for the teachers and the staff, Lord, that are working so hard to share the truth of the gospel with these young people. God, we look at young people even now and we, we realize that in just a few short years they'll be leaders They'll be teachers, they'll be doctors, they'll be politicians. We don't know what they're going to be, preachers, missionaries. Um, God, their lives are being impacted even now. And I pray that even as they hear the truth of, of uh, your word each and every day here, Lord, that you would shape their lives, that you would use them in great ways. Lord, as scary things come their way, I pray that you would encourage them and to trust in you, to look at your word and read what your word has to say so they know they can walk in confidence and boldness and be able to, to weather the storms of this life. Lord, we thank you so much for this school, what you're doing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise team. Let's all stand.
Amen. Good job, guys. Thank you so much. And let's all give a big hand to Mr. Ken. Great PowerPoint. Love my picture. Just love looking at myself. Love it. Uh, I'm going to pray us out, and let's go enjoy our day. Let's all bow our heads. Let's sit real still. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day. It's the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We ask that you just bless our journey back over to the building. Help keep us dry today and tomorrow. Be with our homes, be with our families, our community. And we just ask that you keep us free from illness and from bad weather and anything that might uh, bring fear into our lives. We just pray that we can remember that you are the lion, and you fight our battles. And it's in your name we pray. And we all said, Amen. have a great day, everybody.